Let's go into our next question this evening, sent in by Uweza. My question for Dimitri and Karen is about the Quran. Is the Quran also inspired by God like the Bible because it has similar stories to the Bible? Uweza, thank you for that. To just expand Uweza's question, um, and he makes a statement saying, the Bible says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, which means even all the stories in the Bible were inspired. So he asks, does that mean that the Quran was also inspired by God since it has stories in it that are similar to the Bible? Mm. So with the similarities, um, is um, they, there are about 50 or so common characters mm. that you would read of Noah, Abram, David, others that you will read in the Quran that they also appear in those places. But there are some very notable differences where there's um, complete disagreement mm. between the Bible and, of course, the, the Quran, or as the Muslims call it, their Holy Quran. Mm. So um, just to give you a couple of examples is, uh, for instance, when we know in Genesis where God uh, put no, uh, um, Adam in the Garden of Eden and God brought all the animals to him and Adam named them. Mm. Well, in the Quran, it tells us Adam didn't name the animals, he named the angels. Mm. It's quite a notable difference. And then um, often, uh, women will be portrayed in a lower light uh, in the Quran compared to in the Bible. So, for instance, uh, the case of Eve, Eve is not even mentioned that, you know, Adam's wife. Um, there is the case of Noah in the flood. One big notable difference is that Noah's wife uh, was apparently not a believer and that she was condemned, was drowned and went to hell. And, um, and, and so there are, there are some very clear, clear, <laughs> clear differences. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so the main difference, though, and this is the main departure between the Bible and the Quran, is concerning Jesus. Mm. So when it comes to Jesus and to the gospel and salvation, the two do not agree. There's no agreement between the Bible and the Quran. Mm. And um, even though you might read the, the Muslims, they refer to Jesus, Nabi Isa, um, they call him the prophet uh, Jesus. But when they get to it, the Jesus that they portray in the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Quran is not someone who was crucified on the cross, who died for our sins. In fact, in the Quran, in they call it Surah, the Surahs, the chapters, in Surah 4, 157 and 158, it clearly says Jesus didn't die on the cross, mm. which we know is complete nonsense because Jesus did die on the cross. Mm. We've got ample testimonies even outside of the Bible mm. that confirms Jesus did oh. die on the cross. So, yes, we've got to always examine everything. But, folks, to give you a little bit of background here with the Quran, it's, it's very important to realize how the Bible and the Quran are different. Mm. Um, the, the first thing is that the Quran was only written 500 years after the Bible. So, the Bible is already it's, it's written, there's manuscripts all over the place. And um, Muhammad, he was born in case, uh, you know, the, the writings are Muhammad or, or, or not that Muhammad wrote, but he had people writing mm. um, his uh, thoughts. But he was born in the year 571 in Medina, Saudi Arabia. And he, of course, during his lifetime, it's well known that he interacted with Christians. So, of course, he was getting a lot of the teaching, what Christians were saying to him about Adam and Eve and Abraham. And um, so a lot of that was passed on second hand. And so that's the reason why I believe there's a lot of differences, because mm -hmm. as he was reciting, he was remembering some things and maybe not others or getting details wrong, which is a reason. The big question we need to ask ourselves is if Muslims say the Quran is the word of God, the question is, why would God want a new book? if the Bible is all we need. So um, a couple of scriptures, Psalm 19 mm. speaks of God's word and it says that God's word is perfect. And uh, Proverbs 30 verse 5 and 6, Corin, you want to read that? Proverbs 30, 5 and 6, mm. what does it say about God's word? It says, every word of God is pure. 
He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Yes, and uh, Psalm 12 verse 6 affirms that and it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Mm. Now, what is key over here to realize is that Muslims claim the Quran has its place because the Bible is corrupted. But here's a problem with that is because God's word is pure. Mm. God's word is perfect. And um, a scripture even warns us there, don't add to his words. Yeah. In other words, don't bring out any more books after the Bible. Mm. Um, there, there are a number of warnings in the scripture. Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 has a warning against adding to the word of God or taking away. My favorite um, scripture that speaks of the, the inerrancy of the word of God and its completeness is Jude 1 verse 3. Mm. Uh, beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. Now notice these words, which was once for all delivered to the saints. In other words, the faith, the teaching of God's word, of the gospel is once for all. In other words, that there's no Bible V2. Bible V3, there's only one Bible given mm -hmm. and Jude is saying, and Jude was writing right before the time of Revelation, he says that this Bible is forever, it's good forever, it's pure, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Um, and then getting to the close of the Bible, last mm -hmm. book of the Bible, Revelation, right at the end of the Bible, Revelation 22. And, and so, um, Corin, what does that say? It's a warning, in fact, a very severe warning. <laughs> Revelation 22, 18 and 19, it says, If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things that are written in this book. Yeah, stern warning. Mm. So the Bible closes with someone, and, and, and just saying it's a, it's, it's a curse in other words, to either take away or to add to mm. God's word, these prophetic books that we have in the writings of the scripture. So 500 years pass and Muhammad is he's not a prophet. He's just a man about 40 years old. He's in a cave and an angel named Jibril appears to him and begins to speak to him right here. I've got a message for you. I've got something to say to you. And um, uh, Muhammad is so afraid. This is from <clears throat> Muslim history. He's so afraid. He goes running out of that cave as fast as he can, believing that he was being attacked by an evil spirit. He runs to his wife. Mm -hmm. and um, But from that time on, these visits became more regular. This angel Jibril. And um, during this time, he would have very strange mm. manifestations. His body would contort. He would uh, begin to foam at the mouth, go into trance-like mm. state. Um, he, he would begin to snort like a camel. Um, sometimes it'd be the sound of bees and he'd have severe headaches. And at that time, this angel was continuing to tell, Muhammad, you're a prophet. And imparting what Muslims believe today. In other words, one of the things saying, you know, God, Jesus is not the son of God. That's an important thing. Mm. And so a lot of these doctrines, they straight out contradict what is revealed in scripture mm. about God, about his triunity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, about the Lord Jesus Christ, about the gospel. And um, Galatians chapter 1 verse 8, Paul, foreseeing these kind of things happening, listen to what he says. Galatians 1 verse 8. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. And he repeats it again. In fact, in the thing, mm -hmm. he says, I say it again. Even if an angel, a spirit brings another mm -hmm. gospel, don't believe it. Let him be accursed other than the gospel that was given mm -hmm. to you. And so here is a very clear example of angelic being. 
uh, Muhammad said it was Jibreel or whoever it was, but bringing a different gospel, not the true gospel that we have of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, Muhammad, as he would go into these trance-like states, he would begin. And of course, his followers who gathered around them, he would dictate. He wasn't writing. He would dictate to them. Say, write this down. This is what I heard. And of course, his followers would write down. They would write down on pieces of parchment because, they, you know, they didn't have a lot there. Mm -hmm. They would write on stones. They would write on, on, on palm leaves and just wherever they could. And so after Muhammad dies, a couple of years, 20 years pass. And of course, they're trying to write down all these um, writings, teachings of Muhammad. And uh, it goes on to about uh, 5, 6, 650 AD. And then the, the caliph um, Uthman realizes that we've got, so he was, he was one of the uh, leaders there in that area, the Middle East. And he realizes, look, there's so many different versions going around here of what Muhammad said, what he didn't say and contradicting. So eventually he takes one and he says, this is the real one, burn all the others. And um, so that's what that's what happened. And so that is how uh, the Quran that Muslims have. And of course, mm -hmm. one big thing is to realize it's only in Arabic. OK, mm -hmm. so they don't encourage people to have the Quran in your language. So, you know, someone really to get to know it, they've got to know Arabic. Mm -hmm. um, so there are all these issues. But to realize as we witness, as we share the gospel with Muslims, listen, Jesus loves Muslims. He wants Muslims to come to know the truth. And uh, just think at all times, we were all outside of the love, outside of the, the Lord Jesus Christ, outside of his kingdom. We had to come in. Mm. We had to become believers and follow Jesus. There's only, the Bible says, one mediator mm. between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only way of salvation. Uh, Muslims teach, and that was what was imparted to Muhammad, that there were seven prophets that uh, starting from Abraham, Isaac going on, that there were seven prophets and Jesus was number six and Muhammad himself saying, I'm number seven. In other words, that he is greater than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so when you're discussing and you're talking with a Muslim, ask them, can you tell me in what way was Muhammad greater than Jesus? Um, what did he do that Jesus uh, that, that Jesus did. Did he do miracles? Did he heal sick people? Did he, uh, his teaching about love and grace and forgiveness? Is mm -hmm. that what Muhammad? And so there are some radical differences right over there. To those Muslims who claim and they say, well, we can't believe the Bible. And the reason we've got the Quran is because the Bible was corrupted. You simply ask them and you say to them, okay, what information what evidence do you have to support your view that the bible is corrupted mm -hmm. okay when was it corrupted who corrupted it what parts were corrupted you see at this time they just can't answer that okay they've got no evidence sometimes they'll say the gospel of barnabas or whatever but you know they'll they'll try come up with different things but you say who corrupt when was it corrupted how was it corrupted and um, so a lot of those are just mm -hmm. empty claims so at the end of it, I'm glad we got our Bible. Our mm. Bible wasn't just written by one man or the teachings of one man. Um, the Bible is 66 books written by 40 authors over 1,500, 1,600 years. Mm. Okay. It's, if you could think of it like a ship and there's the hull and the, the decks and the, um, uh, the sails, the mast, every part that fits in and every part fits together. Mm -hmm. Not just one writer, many writers testifying. And of course, the central part of the gospel, the Bible is Jesus Christ died for your sins and for my sins on the cross. Mm -hmm. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. And if you believe in him, you put your faith in him, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's a lot to say, sure. isn't it? But yes. Essentially, mm -hmm. I think people, a lot of people, not even Christians, don't understand. They don't realize. Mm -hmm. um, and so they just accept, well, the Quran is open and they don't examine. Yeah. So we need to examine these things. Awesome. So thank you so much for that. Let's go on to...